In this video, we jump into this really well-known and really important section in 2 Timothy. The sermon I preached from this section I called, To Be Continued. As I always do, I encourage you to take some time to read through this familiar passage a few times, but read it in the context of what we've seen in the book so far. So if you haven't been watching the videos up till this point, I really encourage you to go and look at what we've seen in this book of 2 Timothy so far, so that you can read this important section within that context. Because in the book as a whole, we've seen that Paul is calling Timothy and leaders in the church in general to finish the work of proclaiming Christ as they stick to the truth about Jesus, all in the face of sufferings, as they endure sufferings with a view of the life to come, the hope that is ours because of Jesus. And in this section, uh, the, the truth, the word of truth, the scriptures, comes into focus over and over again. So read the passage a few times yourself and spend some time praying that God would help you to understand his word of truth so that you might be a person who increasingly handles God's word of truth correctly. Now, just as we begin, it's important to see that in this section there is a central imperative. An imperative is a verb that is a command. In the previous section, as Paul highlighted the false teachers, uh, the, the central imperative in that section was, have nothing to do with them. Now, in this section, as Paul focuses on the true teacher of the word, he says to Timothy here, continue in what you've learned. Now, this is uh, the central imperative to this whole section. Everything that Paul is saying in these verses revolves around this command. Continue in what you learned, this truth. He speaks about those who he learned this truth from. He speaks about this truth as the Holy Scriptures and all Scripture. So the structure of this passage, we look at what comes before this imperative and what comes after this imperative. And uh, another tool that helps us to see this is Paul's repetition of, of this language. But as for you... And you, however, uh, in the Greek, those are uh, the same phrase. And the two big things that Paul wants Timothy to see from this section is that he needs to continue in what he's learned in the first part from the example of Paul. And in the second part, to continue in what he's learned from the Holy Scriptures themselves, the word of truth. And so that's the overarching structure of this section. Continue in what you've learned from the example of those who are shaped by the word of truth, also as you yourself are shaped by that word of truth. Now just some other repetition that we see. Paul starts, you however know about my teaching. And then at the end, he says that scriptures are useful for teaching and just linking the fact that Paul's teaching was a teaching that came from all scripture. It wasn't just Paul's own ideas. But in this section, uh, Paul doesn't only highlight the fact that he taught truths. He also highlights the fact that he suffered and he endured through that suffering. He speaks about uh, his persecutions as a part of that suffering. And then he says, well, anybody who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Paul also puts the spotlight on our Lord Jesus Christ in this section. He speaks of his own faith in Jesus, and he says that scriptures are the thing that brings you to faith in Jesus. So when God, by his Spirit, opens our eyes to see Jesus through the Holy Scriptures, then we come to that point of being putting our faith in Jesus for the salvation of our sins that Paul has been focusing in on throughout this book actually since his first letter to Timothy, where he, he put salvation in the spotlight. As God, our Savior, wants all people to be saved. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Stick to that truth. Continue in what you've learned. Paul says that these are truths that Timothy knows, but that he also knows those who taught it to him. And he points to his infancy, so he's pointing back to uh, Timothy's granny and mom, who he mentioned in chapter 1, 
of this letter. But he also is pointing Timothy back to himself and saying, Timothy, you know me. You know all about my teaching. And this my in the Greek governs this whole list. So it's my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my endurance, my persecutions, my sufferings. He's saying, Timothy, you know all about that. And now Timothy had been with Paul for 15 years on his missionary journey. So Timothy really did know all about uh, the things, not only the things Paul taught, but he had seen the way he lived. He said, you know my doctrine, you know my life, you know my focus, my purpose, my aim. And Paul also mentions here what happened to him in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra. Uh, you can go and read all about what happened there in Acts chapters 13 and 14. You can go and dig into God's word of truth there and see the kinds of things that happened to Paul in those places. And what we see in those chapters is that people were against Paul as he taught this truth. In Lystra, people from Antioch and Iconium actually came and rallied a mob to end up stoning Paul. They dragged him outside the city and thought that he was dead. So he faced great sufferings and persecutions because of his teaching and the way he lived that were all shaped by this truth about Jesus. This word convinced over here is also linked with this word faith. So it's what you've learned and have uh, firmly believed because you know those from whom you learned it. In this passage, Paul uses this uh, beautiful word that uh, he coined himself. It doesn't seem to come from any other Greek literature. But the idea of being God-breathed is talking about the inspiration of Scripture. Now, these verses have been used, and rightly so. They have been used to prove the doctrine of inspiration. Uh, they've been used to prove the usefulness of Scriptures, that it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. But that's why I urged you at the beginning of this video to read this section in context, because what Paul is saying in these verses is rather to reassure Timothy and all ministers of the gospel who are struggling that because these words are the very words of God, they are absolutely adequate to accomplish the work that God has given to, to those who are ministers of the gospel, who are seeking to faithfully handle God's word of truth. And so in the context of this command here, continue in what you've learned, continue with these scriptures, uh, because you know those who taught it to you, you know your granny, you know your mom, you know that they were faithful people, they knew and loved Jesus, and you also know that you learned it from me, from my example, from my teaching, so continue in this. And it is these scriptures that are absolutely adequate for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This term, uh, servant of God, has many Old Testament echoes. Uh, we see it is used um, of Moses and King David and Elijah, Elisha, these key people in God's big story who, who led God's people and were shaped by God's truth. And Paul is saying that ministers of the gospel today, like Timothy, are servants of God, like these people, as they continue to teach God's truth to God's people. So they themselves, as these servants, will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But as they teach these truths, as Timothy continues in what he's learned uh, faithfully teaching God's word to others, he will not only himself be equipped for every good work, but he'll also equip those uh, under his ministry for every good work. Just jumping back to the beginning here, where he says, you, however, have know all about. Uh, the nuance of this word is you have followed. So you've followed my teaching, my way of life, my purpose. And Timothy's calling him to continue to follow. Continue in what you've learned from my example. As we saw in the previous section, as the false teachers were being shaped by misplaced loves, the love of themselves or the love of money or the love of pleasure, here Paul is saying he has been shaped by his love for God. And he's saying, you followed that. And he's saying, continue to follow that. 
but he wants Timothy and all those who follow this example to know that it's not going to be easy. He says here, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Suffering was a part of Paul's story right from the start of his ministry. This is referring to his first missionary journey. And here he was writing from prison about to be executed because of his trust in Jesus. And he's saying, if you want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will be persecuted. And the false teachers around you, the evildoers and imposters, they're going to go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So the idea here is that they'll end up believing their own propaganda. They'll believe the, own, the lies that they are deceiving people with. They'll actually deceive themselves with those very lies. But he says, but as for you, don't follow in the example. Continue in what you've learned. Continue following the example of those who are shaped by this word of truth as you continue in this word of truth yourself because you know those who, you, who you've learned it from. And the very important reason why he needs to continue in this truth is because these holy scriptures are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. This was Paul's big overarching aim. He wanted people to be saved by Jesus. And the only way that that could happen is if they were made wise for the salvation through the teaching of Holy Scripture. We can't debate people into the kingdom of God and we can't convince people about their need to trust in Jesus apart from convincing them from God's word because God's Holy Scriptures correctly handled in the power of his spirit are what God uses to bring people to that point of becoming wise, to see that they need their sins saved by Jesus, and so they place their trust in Jesus. And not only is this Holy Scripture the thing that helps people to become Christians, to see disciples made, but also these Holy Scriptures will mature those who are d disciples of Jesus as you continue to teach them and rebuke and correct. These are good things. They're not bad things to be rebuked and corrected, to be shown where you aren't living God's way for God's glory. And then these scriptures will train you in righteousness. So these holy scriptures will make the child of God more and more like King Jesus, the Son of God. And so we need to continue in what we've learned. And this is very important for us uh, as leaders in the church, but it's important for everyone in the church to never move away from the word of truth that brings us to this point of salvation. We want to grow in our understanding of this truth while we never move away from this truth. And as you continue to dig into this passage, I pray that God would thrill your heart with the wonder of who he is and what he's done to save those who place their trust in King Jesus. Well, God bless as you dig in further.